Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have the presentation of the BIS on quality transformation. We have Peter Rutkowski here, who is the the direct academic director of the BIS and research coordinator. Co, the political observer of the Radio Liberty and uh, uh, anchor of the talk show in the Belsat. We're discussing it today with Sergei Nikoluk, sociologist, and Yuri Drakachrus, the political observer of Radio Liberty. Good morning, Yuri. Today's meeting will be commentated by Vadim Ajeka, PhD in Cultural Sciences and Analyst of the Belarusian Institute of Strategic Studies. I would like to remind you that we have the interpretation available into English, so it's, it's easier for you to listen to us in English. Please select the relevant channel, Vadim. Back to you. Thank you, Anton. Good morning, everyone. Today we'll be dis discussing the uh, qualities of Belarusians and uh, uh, how they changed uh, because they are different from what they were 10, 20, and 30 years ago. And it's important to understand how uh, we can actually use the toolkits to measure what Belarusians think. And my colleagues have done a lot of to assess the data and present the comprehensive study that will allow us to understand the trends in the Belarusian sites of the last 30 years. So today our work will be construed in the following way. At the beginning will be able to let Piotr Rutkowski to present the results of the research. Then we'll listen to our, our colleagues uh, who will uh, discuss the research. And also those of you present will be able to ask your questions and leave comments we will discuss everything in detail so i suggest we follow this agenda now i'll give floor to Piotr rodkowski coordinator of the research and the director of the belarus institute of strategic studies Piotr, the floor is yours good morning how much time do i have Well, I'm sure you will not be able to tell us everything, but since we have a presentation, I think you might as well use uh, about 10, 15 minutes. Anyway, we can start. I think 10, 15 minutes are not enough even for the introduction to the studies, but still I tell you about the topic of the research and the highlights and some conclusions, not all of them, but some. I'm not going deep, I'm not showing the details about uh, some uh, all graphs and tables, figures, you will be able to uh, learn more about this during the Q&A session and discussion, or uh, you will be able to turn to this research later and um, read about all the figures yourself. I'll start by saying that I'll start by the with the rules about the history professor of the old Egypt ancient Egypt, who came to the university as a guest, as a guest lecturer. Students were very intrigued because he was a famous professor. 
While presenting his material, he asked the questions what uh, they were particularly interested in. Uh, students said that they would want wanted to know more about the social structure of the old Egypt. What was special about it? Uh, equalities, inequalities, and so on. Professor, Professor's uh, face expression changed. He uh, looked distraught and he said, what can I tell you about social structures and some global things? I'm uh, specialized on making bricks on how bricks were made in the old Egypt. I tell you, I can tell you a lot about this. I'm saying this because there are things like uh, getting specialized on small bricks. I want these small blocks can uh, because of the such such blocks the whole picture can disappear particularly when we try to understand what uh, society looks like what it what is built on particularly we touched upon the cultural spaces there's a problem of getting fixed on a separate uh, building blocks for example like attitude to homosexuality or eurasian integration or in the European Union, sometimes uh, separate few more building blocks are added, but there is an issue of seeing uh, the middle ground of this uh, construction, let alone the whole picture. The whole picture, whole, the whole construction will not be provided to even by our research. But the added value of this research is that, unlike the the professor I told you about, who was specializing on how particular bricks were made in the old Egypt, we can propose to you the blocks, the sets of blocks, sets of bricks based on the big uh, mass uh, on the data, big array of the data that covers over the last 30 years and considering the, the trends in other geographical uh, areas in the Western Europe, Central Europe and Eastern Europe, particularly in the selected Eurasian countries, uh, that is the participants of the Eurasian integration. We can would like to offer you the the comprehensive vision mm. so we can would like to answer the question of the comprehensive picture but about belarus in the comparative sense this work is built of three parts in the first part we present the content uh, that we used to analyze the, and the concept of Christian Welt, the director of the of, and the ex, expert in the cultural issues. And we are showing how much we're using his concept in our research. Later, we compare these trends in th three uh, spaces, Western, Eurasian, and uh, Eastern European. basically post-communist bloc. The name of the scientist is Christ, Christian Weltzel, director of the World Village View Association. Well, it will help us to analyze Belarus 
And the third part, which is the main one for our environment, this centric is dedicated to Belarus. And uh, the values of Belarusians are analyzed from different standpoints. From the historical standpoint, how the, the values changed the last 30 years geographically, what the uh, values look like in, in terms of age, confessions. And here we found a lot of correlations of Belarus. The main source of data here were the results of the sociological surveys in the framework of the world value surveys. This is a non-state global project that uh, was launched in 1980-1981 when there was organized a big survey about the values. And uh, the people were asked about the values and attitudes about the government, subnational institute, supranational institute, institutes, homosexuality, extramarital sex, depending on the countries. The number of questions uh, ranged from 100 to 300. And starting uh, with the second wave of questions in 1990-1994, the geographical coverage of was wider in Belarus. That appeared at, at the time, I mean, independent Belarus. There were surveys conducted the world, world values. In this regard, we have six uh, waves of the survey. There are tens of hundreds of questions. Some are very important. The big debt array that in some way were analyzed but never in the conceptual, never conceptually, never with a conceptual approach that will allow to give uh, the wholesome picture, comprehensive picture. There were some steps uh, made in that direction the last three or four years in the made by the Baroque Center. Mr. Korshinov played a great role there, he made a great contribution to this. But in the framework, our research, the idea was to cover the much bigger data array and analyze them comprehensively to show the concepts that uh, have internal relations there were the relations between various blocks. I uh, must say a few more words about the waves, the national waves that I mentioned. I'll uh, share my presentation. There were seven waves has been seven waves of survey questions. The first one was conducted in the limited coverage. The second one was more comprehensive. And the third one involved others as well. On the left, uh, you can see the Roman figures and uh, in our research we use them very often because it's much easier to perceive them 
I mean the Roman numerals. You can see the frameworks. The second wave covered 1994. This survey was conducted in 1990 because in some, only some countries were covered in 1994. For a number of reasons, it cannot be made in the big number of countries at the same time. The th next wave, uh, 1995 slash 1998, the fourth wave covered 1999 slash 2004. The fifth wave, 2008, uh, wave six, 2011, and 20, wave seven, 2017. The results of the last seventh wave were published in the summer last year. In June, in June there appeared the emerged data about Belarus. And since then, we have been analyzing the this space in Belarus in a comparative approach. Then things happened that we all know about and uh, this at the same time worked on the transformation, trying to analyze the political situation. At the same time, the work on the values took a longer time over a year. Here you can also get a question about the relevance of this research, considering the fact that the last survey was conducted in 2018. That is true if we look at uh, the values trend. But in terms of values, it's basically yesterday because the values with, with some minor exceptions, they don't change overnight. So uh, in some geographical spaces, including Belarus, they did not change much without some exceptions. So the during the four, five-year period, there were rarely any significant changes. In some ways, uh, in some values like the readiness to participate in the protests and demonstrations, in this regard, the values may change depending on the situation. They're very much dependent on this. But some many things like the gender equality, attitude to religion and relativeness, uh, payment on payment of taxes uh, and things like that they don't change overnight so the results in terms of values published in 2018 they're still relevant in terms of sensitive topics like the it's not about the review it, but I've just given it by analogy. As to the attitude to the symbols like uh, white red white flag and uh, integration with Russia and the EU, uh, even in these respects, this respect, the changes were not significant. On the background of the recent events, and also we need to consider the systems of values that uh, we surveyed, that were surveyed and the, the value system that covers emancipation and secularism, secularism based on the human empowerment concept by Christian Welzel. This emancipation value system, according to him, is based on four systems. The first one is called choice. Such things are uh, uh, attitude to the homosexuality, divorce, 
abortion. Equality of women and men. Equality is the next point here. I believe this could be touched upon a later uh, questions. If uh, women require higher education more than men, the priority here. And here the indicators that uh, are part of the equality system. The next one is the called voice. Priority of the general influence on the decisions of the general nature or priority of the freedom. Priority the locals and the local communities. And the fourth one is autonomy. Uh, should children be should should children be taught independence? And is it the one of the most important values here should be reared in children? In the secular secular system of values that according to the Veltas is the foundation of the emancipation. We noted in our research that we did not set the normative tasks. In other words, we did not want to prove what's best, what's worst, what's worst. Through the prism of four attitude, patrimonial, we analyze the attitude to the religious authorities, patrimonial authorities, state authorities, and uh, civil norms. And here it's about the uh, indicators on how people perceive themselves as religious, non-religious person. In terms of patrimonial uh, authorities, uh, there are some differences in attitude between Welta and uh, Belarusians. There are some conglomerates of values here. And among the, in the defined subsystems, uh, the desire to consider one of the, make your uh, parents proud. And in terms of skepticism, uh, there are trust to in police and uh, the last one, the civil norms are uh, about payment on payment of taxes. Payment on payment for your travels and so on. So these are the indicators of my micro blocks. Right, well, I would like to remind you that your 15 minutes are out, so if you can and soon they'll be great. So uh, to wet your appetite, I'll tell you about the emancipated West. Belarus here, a very secular country, but we must remember that Secular, secularism is not only attitude to religion and churches, but also attitude to the government, the nations, whether one should be proud, not proud of their nation, attitude to things like civil norms, uh, free travel and so on. And people who are more uh, 
the age of the, of the millennium they totally different the so-called specific militias don't have the east and west in this respect uh, there are no uh, big difference between the rural areas and urban areas here but some regions have the specificity the same is true about the some uh, confessions so the big profit they it adds to the emancipation well and I, I think it's in a nutshell that's everything i wanted to tell you in terms of introduction to my research thank you Piotr. We co you covered a lot of interesting points a lot we have to we can discuss now so i'd like to give floor to vital zhanko who also played a role in this work and uh, Vitaly, what do you think was the most interesting here? Good morning, everyone. I was, uh, my task was more publicistic. And I'll tell you what uh, is more important here. Thanks to this, I also participated in this research. That was my role to highlight the most interesting points uh, from the point of view of journalist and publicist i will tell you what i like most what i found interesting uh what i found special and what i found non-traditional in in terms of belarusian's perception of the of values first first and foremost is the agnosticism is one of the most noticeable and maybe sensational things uh, that according to secularism uh, secular values belarusian uh, in the second place after the czech republic it could surprise people who lived in the czech republic because czech republic is well known as the most atheistic countries of europe but uh, usually belarusians are considered uh, believers particularly orthodox christians but if we go deeper we'll see that the, on the one hand some people say they're christians uh, but when you ask person when how many times they visited the church they said uh, they have been there several times um, uh, that that that's shows uh, that people usually say yes to the question if they believe in God, but at the same time, people who call themselves religious, they are secular because they share the secular values. Religion as the uh, value system doesn't is not really important. The religion for them is uh, more of a tradition that uh, religion than was enjoyed by their parents and the grandparents and the so-called norms that are part of the state ideology here i uh, remembered my interview with uh, a former priest and dissident who said that we don't have more than one percent of the true orthodox believers that's his personal opinion uh but he believes that very few people go to church every sunday and uh, the figures show that people that call themselves orthodox are very much agnostic 48 percent of them while protestants 4.8 percent 10 times less so these are the real figures and uh, real believers the protestants and people who call themselves orthodox they are in fact 
have very high uh, number of secular values that they share. The trust to the state authorities, this category is uh, filled with skepticism. According to our figures, the, not only the opponents of the authorities uh, distrust the authorities, but also some proponents of the authorities are skeptical about the authorities. So this skepticism is expressed in Belarus by democratic people with democratic um, views and apolitical people who mistrust any actions of the authorities. And they had it formed into philosophical notion. At the same time, uh, this attitude to the distrust to army police and to court system is uh, mostly impressed, expressed in the, in the mistrust of the police. We can only imagine how fig figures in this respect rose after the 2020 events. In terms of skepticism, it is the Protestants that shows attitude like this. Uh, could be because the feel that the tortoise are not happy about the, the confession. Here we can compare it with the United States where the Protestants also, uh, the uh, foundation of the most patriotic place of society like the Republican party and uh, they resist the left liberalism presented by the Democratic party. Also the Belarus as a big figures in relativism. Here the criteria is like attitude to bribery and payment payment tax and uh, payment for transportation. And here's the post-Soviet perception of the society played a major role where you need to pay bribe and uh, free ride and not perceived as the something awful. Belarus made the great progress, as I noticed in the category equality, where Belarus is ahead of all the post-Soviet countries, except Baltics, the Baltic states. Of course, this is comparable to Norway and Denmark that has uh, 0.9 the growth in Belarus was 0 0.4 to 0 0.6. It's the progress that noticed in other categories, but in Belarus still has a, a catch up with the Scandinavian countries. And here, this figure describes the attitude of the females in the workplace. And here we, it proves the trend that the Belarusian society currently is more progressive and developed than the authorities. The mm, is sexist, paternalistic, and does not hide it. And we should remind about the, once again, about the events of 2020, the, the revolution, the female revolution that showed that in this respect, the in terms of equality, Belarus uh, are ahead of, and when, and have progressed in the last several years. Uh, also, the issue of independence for children uh, over the 30 years of research, there were no changes. In such figures, Belarus is, uh, takes 41st place out of 42, having only S S Cyprus and Albania behind in their traditional approaches to the child rearing. According to some surveys, uh, Belarusian parents want to have their children to, to be, their children to be obedient. 
and docile. I'm not going to talk about geographical differences, but last but not least, I wanted to speak for 10 minutes only. An interesting figure is that the, we remember we mentioned about the obedience the people who have never been married are more liberal to children's autonomy and the people who have reared children uh, are less prone to provide children with the maximum freedom i was surprised by that i think I, and here there are the things that i found the most paradoxical in, and very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Vital. I just came to me that uh, that uh, when you mentioned the people who were divorced and had different attitudes because they became free after they became divorced. I just wanted two, three sentences, if I may. Vital said many things that are relevant in terms of ratings. In terms of countries that we put into groups and divided into Western, Eastern European, and East Eurasian groups, participants of the Eurasian integration, about 43 countries to be exact. That's uh, what Vitaly mentioned when he, what we meant when he uh, mentioned the ratings. It doesn't cover. Africa, Asia, Latin America, the United States, and Canada, New Zealand, Australia are involved. But uh, this is the nuance I wanted to highlight and draw your attention to. Thank you very much for this clarification. It's very important to understand the figures. And since we managed to present the major part, I'd like to give floor to give floor to Sergei Nikoluk, who has been calling himself a pensioner. But for many years he worked and worked as a sociologist, and he's the person who was uh, witnessing the changes and the values of Belarusians, and he remembers a lot of things about this, Sergei. What are your thoughts about such transformation and about the peace attitude? First and foremost, I must stop calling myself sociologist because to be a sociologist, one must have the relevant education. And in Belarus, particularly, among my colleagues, there has been a very interesting group of people that are, call themselves political scientists. Uh, I believe a polit political scientist is a person who um, can operate 15 terms. I uh, agree with you, and I'm one of such political scientists, and in this respect, I will try to say a few words about the big research. I received two files of about 200 pages. Not only yesterday, I uh, was trying to browse them. As a person who for many years specialized in civilization 
analysis, I want to warn you that the search that was conducted has its uh, pluses and minuses. Without a doubt, this research and the attitude to it is the attitude of the European person. And here's the plus. It allows to assess the views in society in the context of the Eurasian views. And uh, here lies the minus on the disadvantage of this research for Belarus because the Belarus has uh, big blocks that are not covered by this research. Unfortunately, it was already mentioned here that the last wave was conducted in 2018, so we don't know what the changes were after 2020. It was rightly noticed that from the point of view of values, they should have been minimal. Here, for the public, I wanted to explain the following thing. In August and after August 2020, I uh, many times heard that we lived uh, and we were born in a different society. We were born in a different society. It's impossible. Uh, in August, in the August of 2020, the Russian society from the state of social apathy has switched into um, moved into the political agitation, political anxiety stage. This society has different characteristics, but it's the same society. The anxiety vanishes and we return to the regular state. Without a doubt, the, while the values do change, but if we compare 2015 and 2020, and the survey was conducted in 2018 in the middle, on the one hand, it was reaction to the election that was conducted in the regular way. There was nothing new in terms of the how they were organized in 2020, and the reaction was totally different. Hence the conclusion that this reaction has nothing to do. And I would like to remind you that uh, compare it with 2015, not with 1994. It has nothing to do with the changes of in values in Belarus. The reason that the site is moved into uh, the anxiety stage were totally different. And I would like to say to those who discuss many new strategies on Facebook and so on. Almost all these strategies do not consider the real state of the Belarusian society. And the research that we have seen today show, shows that the Belarusian society, without a doubt, is very much different to the Western societies. And the second conclusion is that the changes in the Belarusian society are quite slow. And those who um, have practical approach to this, not in terms of politics and uh, particularly the young people who have their own life strategies and uh, uh, trying to understand whether they should link their life with Belarus. They should uh, get rid of the euphoria that uh, appeared in 2020 and uh, to assess the what has happened in Belarusian society and uh, based on this, build their own strategies. That was in a nutshell what I wanted to say. Thank you, Sergei. Uh, Sergei is very modest about not calling himself a sociologist. Well, if he's not a sociologist, the question who is a sociologist? 
can't join with uh, that there are a lot of people who studied in the state university and never worked as a sociologist. Sergey is a great sociologist. I was um, very much impressed by the director of the Sociology Institute who spoke about the civil about the society of community of Indians who are resisting the white aggressors. And uh, it shows that the, there are a lot of different sociologists. Thank you, Sergey. My question is, do we have Tatiana Rublevska? Tatiana Rublevska Tokyo, who is a PhD in philosophy. Is she online? If she is, please let us know. Hello, Tatiana. Good morning. This wouldn't uh, speak about the value transformation in the Belarus society. Thank you very much. Uh, with a great pleasure, I'll say a few words about this. First and foremost, it seemed to me that in the, this research, this research has a particular trait that the uh, results are quite obvious. If we consider the relativism of the Belarus society, indeed, the Belarusians among the 43 countries uh, rank third in terms of relativeness relativity and, and uh, and how they reject some things in society, but uh, the youngest people here, more relativist, they are prone to rejecting social norms and the older generation I usually enjoy the relativism. They're prone to the considering the various norms. As obvious, people who are married, the parents, they also, they usually support the norms of society. The divorced people, They're prone to rejecting the societal pressing. Sole proprietors are predictably re rejecting the necessities, uh, need to pay tax and pay bribes, and those working in the state sector support the opposite. I think similar sentences are observed in many other um, spheres. People who call themselves uh, believers, they uh, show the, uh, that they're supporting uh, traditional values more than the new approaches. So I uh, echo what Sergei said, I agree with what he said, uh, that in terms of values, the society does change and change in the predictable way. In terms of values, we don't have any particular splash or upturn, any Uh, unexpected inconsistency that would could be a uh, uh, indirect uh, sign of, of the necessity of the fundamental changes coming. So this research and this is based on the 
a proper European rationality. It shows that not that Belarusian special, but it is that Belarus belongs to the so-called uh, That the Belarus society belongs to. If not uh, atypical, then to some regular expected predictable societies from the point of view of values, and that if we desire to the societal values and views of the people are enjoyed by the new generation that uh, ready to the abrupt changes there's no reason to say that But the research shows that the Belarus, that Belarus, is the proper European country that, uh, in many ways, uh, enjoying the European values. But No, и, скажем, некие там уникальные, а мы можем быть такие некие экстрареволюционные шляпы. But there's no uh, unique or observed here. There's unique, no unique path observed here. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. Indeed, it's very important to understand. Uh, what is happening, it's important to understand what is happening, whether we uh, witness any drastic changes here in the values in the Russian society. Uh, now I would like to give floor to Yuri Drakahrust. We have two political observers from the Radio Liberty. So Yuri, please, what do you think about the value transformation and the research, the relevant research. Uh, good morning, everyone. First and foremost, I would like to congratulate those who prepared this presentation. I am uh, very much excited about it. It is uh, very important to, that this research made a foundation uh, the analysis was conducted and uh, some results were achieved. And this sense that one can make out, out of all these building blocks a special picture this, that it is, may not coincide with uh, the result of the work of the Austrian scientist who shows that the secular values are the foundation of the emancipation. And uh, using the evolution case, you showed that is different, that uh, these both groups of uh, values, they develop uh, In their own trajectories. And now a few words of uh, criticism. My criticism is about the block of touching upon secular values. The first thing, there's a high number of uh, the so-called religious relativism, the attitude to the uh, payment on payment of fines, uh, free ride and bribe pain. So Belarusians, I guess, uh, 
rank third of the Russia and Czech Republic. I believe uh, that Belarusians are different. We all know that Belarusians uh, cross road and the, on the green right. Last year, we saw people taking off the shoes when they stepped on the bench. Nobody forced them to do that. Nobody could do that. If we compare such figures with the data of the transparent Belarus, it's different in this respect. I, for example, skeptical about uh, this result of the survey, but also uh, uh, on my own interpretation of the result. It's not that you, the authors did something wrong. It could be that Belarusians were not particularly uh, were not particularly true, were not particularly telling the truth when they were answering the question. So when he was asked, when the Belarusians were asked if they you know, pay for their trips in the transportation, they say, no, we don't. But if the life is shows different. And I uh, gave you some facts proving that. And one more remark from me about the aggregation of, of the secular Alice block. Agnosticism, mistrust of the Orthodox Church. Out of 43, Belarusians are ranked 18th, so Belarus is somewhere in the middle. It's not the most non believing country between Montenegro, somewhere between Montenegro and Germany. Skepticism. In terms of skepticism, Belarusians ranked 20, 20th. Relative, in terms of relativism, Belarus ranked third. How can you put Belarusians in the second place out of considering all these numbers? In none of these options, those ranks second. It's much lower. And somehow together, it happens that Belarus ranks second. I believe the answer would be that in terms of uh, statistics, this is how it turned out. But the question is how relevant is such aggregation? And I believe that don't exclude the fact that that agnosticism and uh, other building blocks here. They are very different. If uh, we uh, involve the factor analysis, would it be the same? If not, these values are different. And if we just put them together, they make no sense. So in terms of the second place, that Belarusians are the most secular here, in Europe. Well, I'm not sure about that. Let's just adjust our approaches. I believe the second place in Europe in terms of secular approaches is not uh, particularly relevant here. Thank you, Mr. Drakar Hrust. Piotr, could you reply to Yuri Drakachrust. Are we really that secular and how you came to that conclusion? I believe we've... Can I ask a question? Of course. I have a question to Piotr. With the abundance of data, 
I didn't see the most important thing. I didn't say, see the final graph that the Valley researchers should have uh, the last research showed that in terms of there, there is some significant change. Can you show us this shift? I didn't find the final shift graph and the graph with this shift. Thank you very much for your question. I'm trying to analyze the tables while the do you have the values map. It was not our goal to draw the values map. Those of you who want, they make a map, but but it should be ready. You just need to copy it. We had a, a lot of information about the trees, but we uh, didn't have don't have the wood. Sergey, at the beginning of the research, there's a table yeah, ranked by countries, the secular emancipation values. That is the graph uh, that you're looking for. Thank you, Yuri. Well, we can talk more about the visualization. But, Piotr, can you reply to what Yuri and Sergei said? I believe you have a lot of, a lot of data. Well, I start commenting on the relativism, aggregation, and other things. As to the relativism, I'm entering the space of Tatiana. She could formulate in some other way. But the thing is, in terms of the Austrian scientist concept, and the relativism indicators. Here we're testing not the, our goal is not only not to describe the practice of the community, like the payment of payment of taxes or bribes, and not so much about the values, but the in the inclination of the of the people to act uh, like the society expect them to. Well, it, I'm not. I'm maybe going into psychoanalysis, but with all my app skepticism towards psychoanalysis, I can see here some confirmation here that society, which is answers this question in the absolute way, like absolutely no, not. Like we're not paying the taxes or not paying the bribes. The life practice is more complicated than this. And I believe here people are just uh, are not describing the real actions, but are trying to describe the social norms. And in this respect, the when people uh, 
people are being nihilistic. Zelce believes that some uh, people are shown resilience towards the pressing. So basically, that's the logic describing this indicator. It may have some weaknesses. But I saw here see a chance that thanks to this approach, that we can see some important traits in the mentality of the Russians. You drew the parallel with the people taking off their shoes. In some countries, uh, like Belarus, the, the Belarusian citizens were the representatives of the changes. And the three indicators there were the free ride, non payment of bribe, and the taxes. They demonstrate that what people think about the state and how the what their attitude to the states, whether they trust it or not. But again, the state pressing is also involved. And the Austrian scientist, Welzer shows that um, while answering the questions, um, respondents are under pressure. I need to recheck the tables in terms of relatives, Belarus ranks quite high. How oh. using the calculations of the world review of values, world's values review. We need to maybe make a special application that was calculated data from the 43 countries. In terms of relativism, Belarus is uh, one of the leaders in terms of uh, defiance. Belarus is not one of the leaders. Why it ranks so high in the aggregated rating is uh, a question we need to answer. In terms of the final result, I believe Mr. Nikoluk has a different value system that he compares this research to. He has a different value scale. I'm uh, being skeptical about things, but you can generalize in different ways. Uh, basically, the major conclusions are expressed in the end of the research. 
it takes more time to, to read it but as an editor I wanted to add some fun elements to it. Uh, so I suggest you familiarize yourself with the third part of the research more. Thank you, Peter. Indeed, we've heard a lot of replies to help us to understand what needs to be added to the research. Maybe some of our discussion participants have questions or remarks to add. Pavel Daneka is among our viewers. Maybe somebody, somebody else would like to make a remark. Birok has also been mentioned to today's presentation. Yuri or Sergey? Uh, uh, question from Pavel is uh, whether the final version is available. I'm ready to read the, even on the non-final version. Yuri, I don't know how they uh, came to those numbers but the, it is possible yes we know that uh, sometimes the, the figures differ but there should be uh, set indices if all of them are not they're somewhere in the middle but the aggregation put them at the top which is um, difficult to believe in the research paper should be available tomorrow i'll send it to pavel i believe uh, vadim will send me the next excel file Please show me of up to six tables in the Excel file. Thank you. My remark is that uh, it's great to see this research because the transformation of the value system uh, very much depends on the generation. So I believe we can understand more about what is happening in the generation in the age groups of 31 to 40 and uh, so on. Douglas Mortlons uh, said that, I don't understand, but there was a, a bifurcation point that showed that the paradigm shift. It will be important to see what will happen, what happened after the 2020. I believe Ivan Krastin describes very well the old generation in terms of well describing the value systems of the younger generations. The collapse of the reforms in this Eastern Europe shows that the value system of the societies were never considered. The reforms for Czech Republic and uh, Bulgaria were the same, while the Czechs are very much 
are like Germans, even though Germans disagree, but the Bulgarians are almost Turks. And understanding that uh, the same stimulus and other value systems uh, uh, result in different activities, they are clear in the failure the policies uh, that affected Afghanistan. So when you stimulate, when you support uh, the person hoping that they will be engaged in the entrepreneurial activities, on the one hand, uh, the value systems are market-based and non-market-based. Uh, people uh, consider the entrepreneurship activities in a different ways. So on the one hand, one group believes that the entrepreneurship is the uh, zero-sum game, and the other group believes that the added value scheme. If you consider the protest in the United States, they um, will immediately start the get involved in activities that will make people they uh, will make them independent if you do the same in afghanistan the people uh, are not stimulated by this help and aid we understand that the stimulus system must be adequate to the value system of any given society but the question arises can we somehow effectively affect, influence the value tr transformation through reforms? And uh, this question is still open. It's hard to understand how to do it. Thank you, Pavel. Thank you for this remark. We need to remember that the, it's not about philosophical uh, thinking, but it should be some applied research. Uh, we saw that well, um, my colleagues have something to say. But just as Sergei Nikoluk said that uh, there's a consensus that the values don't change, uh, at least radically, I still believe that is not an axiom. If we consider the people that lived in uh, 1991, and people who lived in 1991 and uh, 1991 or 1992, they uh, did radically change their values. But the, the former communist system became uh, marginal and uh, underground business activities became uh, the respected business activities. These changes were was something there was something that people catch up with, caught up with like the independence of Belarus and Ukraine and uh, the Ukrainians and 70 percent of them in 1991 they voted against the independence. At first, and uh, later, 90% uh, of them voted in favor of the Ukrainian independence. Those are the not deep changes, but uh, the changes in the environment do for prompt the changes in the thinking. Do you think there's a political changes? do affect the mentality fast. The changes in the value system is linked with the generation change. The Ukraine is a great example of what is happening. Douglas Nord said that there are historical events that significantly change some 
values, the bifurcation points, exactly. There is a very nice research about the age groups in terms of uh, created by Euro monitoring. Alexander Losev once said that is a was a philosopher that the first principle of the verification of the true response is a aesthetic nature. In this respect, it's interesting to see what are aesthetic, uh, aesthetically, what do people aesthetically approve of? Uh, ages 31 to 40, watch Hollywood movies uh, first, and then uh, the Russian movies. 45 to 60 age group, uh, dominated by the Russian, Soviet, and then Hollywood movies. And 60 plus groups, is dominated by the Soviet films, followed by the Russian films. And it shows the structure of the values. According to Euro monitoring, the attitude to the market economy and democracy, Belarusians are under 31, uh, rank first in, in this respect. This is how transformation happens. I'm saying that because it's a long process in terms of generation change. And the generation change leads to the total changes. However, they are supported by the bifurcation point, right? They don't contradict each other. Peter, could you react to this? Uh, you, the research coordinator, I think must have something to add. I just wanted to say that the, we need to recheck some figures and, and then we'll uh, make a research paper available tomorrow. would like to remind you that today on the website, we have some short announcement and the, but the full paper uh, on the website, we have an, uh, the so-called appetizer. Right, we, uh, we've, we've been discussing this issue for hour and a half. We've covered a lot. Colleagues, do you have anything to add? I suggest everyone reads the research paper in full, available on the BIS website. Does anybody want to add something? If not, then uh, we'll wait for the full research to be available on the website. Maybe Piotr wanted to say something in the end. What are the main conclusions that we can end today's session with? Mr. Nikoluk rightly said that uh, with a desire to cover the major number of the, the biggest number of the values, it's difficult to do. Uh, one of our plans was to introduce the third block that covered the things like competition, individual paternalistic approaches, uh, 
который был опубликован еще в Литвине минулого года. And the last year there is a small text covering this. But it needs to be researched deeper. And I suggest uh, you read this research. to and have a more comprehensive picture of what is happening with values in Belarus. We believe that uh, we shouldn't add that part yet. Uh, indeed, uh, this is a comprehensive research, and I suggest you uh, take your time for this. I would like to thank everyone who took part in today's presentation. Those of you prepared the research, who expressed their opinions about it, and who all of you made a valuable contribution in this. Uh, Hopefully, we'll soon get access to the full research paper on the BIS website. I'd like to remind you that today at 5 p.m. Minsk time, we'll have the, the final meeting of the Expert Analytical Club, where we will make conclusions of the 2021 and discuss the various forecasts uh, for the 2022. So we invite everyone who hasn't registered yet Please fill in the form available in the, on Facebook and the Press Club website. We'll be happy to see you this evening. I'll see you soon. Thank you.